It is 6.42 and a warm welcome back. Thank you so much for staying with us. Now, this morning, my colleague Pearl Chongwe is out in Tembisa uh, to cover the United Nations Kasi Road Safety Campaign. And uh, let's say a very good morning to you, Pearl. Can you kindly set the scene for us as to why you there, what is happening, and what we should expect uh, for the rest of the day? A very good morning to you, Sims, and of course to all our viewers from across Morning Live Land. It's quite freezing here this morning, and you're right. I am coming to you live from Pumlani Mall in Tembisa. Now, it's the 13th of May, a day in which the South African Department of Transport, Gassi Road Safety, the Road Safety Infringement Agency, and other stakeholders have declared as the biggest road safety convoy campaign. Now, what this means is that there will be a convoy leaving from right here in Pumlani Mall from about 10 o'clock this morning and it will go all the way to First Lyris Stadium. A lot of stakeholders have started arriving here. I've seen uh, people coming through from the uh, Transport Department. In fact, Deputy Minister Cindy Siwe Chikunga is with us here this morning and I'll chat to her about their involvement here this morning as a department. Very good morning, ma'am, and welcome to Morning Lab. Good morning and good morning to your viewers. Now, you guys arrived here quite early this morning. The freezing weather has not deterred the reason why you are here. Quickly take us through your involvement as a department in this campaign. It's a campaign that was launched in 2007, and this is the fourth one. The 2007 one focused on young people. It ended up with a declaration. South Africa was part of that. The third one is in 2013. It focused on pedestrians. And in South Africa, 40% of fatalities that we have on our roads are involve pedestrians. The third one was in 2015. It focused on children and their vulnerability on the road and road accidents. And this time around, we're focusing on speed management. Uh, we are, of course, aware that in developing countries such as South Africa, 50% of fatalities are associated with speed uh, by cars. And in developed countries, it will be one third of that. And, and as South Africa as, and as part of UN and in particular a member state of UN and World Health Organization who we decided also that we're going to participate in these programs. And that is why we are here. It actually talks to the seriousness with which we take this program of, of managing speed. And ours is to say hashtag uh, 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 save lives. Save lives. Hashtag slow down. That's what we're saying. Please to slow down. We need to do that as South Africa because if we just adhere to the speed and take into account the circumstances that prevail at a particular time, right? like, like today the roads are wet, even if the speed limit was 120 kilometers per hour, however, we might have to reduce speed taking into account the fact that the road is wet and it's easy therefore for the car to, to, slip, to, be, to, 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 to slide and so on and so forth. So these are the things that we're talking about and you are here talking to our stakeholders, uh, whether it is the taxi industry, talking to car manufacturers, talking to car insurances and so on, to say together, let's work and ensure that we save lives on the roads by reducing speed. We're talking to the issue of our traffic officers, the training that we're going to offer to them, now increasing it from being a national, I mean, just a certificate to being a national diploma and, and ensuring that they take into account all these issues. Deputy Minister, talk to us about those speed limits. Has there been anything that's been done to maybe change them? I know there was talk back in 2015 about some of these speed limits being altered. Has that kicked in and how far is, is, is that? In fact, if you, you talk about the speed limit in South Africa on the national road, the highest speed would be 120 kilometers. We've not changed that. I don't think we intend changing that. Uh, in other areas, you'll have particularly the provincial road, the height speed will normally be 100 kilometers per hour. Do, are we intending to change that? Or, but I don't think we do. However, in residential areas, we do think that we have to change the speed limit because in residential areas, the highest speed is 60 kilometers per hour. And we have the problem of pedestrians forming 40% of fatalities. And we think there is a link between the speed of 60 kilometers per hour in the residential area and the pedestrians being responsible for men, in fact, dying on the roads. And for that, we think we've got to reduce that, particularly in areas that are close to schools. It cannot be 60 kilometers. Even 30 kilometers per hour will be right in areas that are close to schools. So it's things that we, 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 we're looking at. It's things that we're consulting on because we surely must have a buy-in from 
all South Africans when we introduce these things. But as government, we think that it's the right time that we actually advise that in areas such as rural, in residential areas, areas that are close to schools, areas that are close to taverns, because where you see a tavern across the road, you don't have to ask. That area is responsible for many accidents, particularly involving pedestrians. So it's such things that we're looking at to say, how else can we do it? And I believe that the South Africans will be buying in into that. The bikers, you see them on the road, they overtake you like it's a bullet. And it cannot be because that speed does not apply. In fact, the, sp the speed of 120 in on national roads will apply even to bikers. We're also looking at the issue, like I've said, coming measures on the roads, like your speed tra uh, uh, hamps. And, and, and in that regard, you will know that even a national road or a provincial road, when it is in the, in the city or town, it becomes a municipality road. So in the cities and towns, municipalities can therefore build Ham, I mean, uh, speed hams. And I think it's something that we need to look into seriously because there are quite a number of pedestrians that are dying on our roads and it can't continue like that. Deputy Minister, I quite like that you are talking about pedestrians because I think often uh, when messages of road safety are brought forward, a lot of people tend to assume that it's only directed at the motorists, uh, dr uh, biker drivers and so forth. But how can pedestrians then keep themselves safe and help in reducing the number of the fatalities that we've seen? And that is why we have got to start by introducing road safety education at school, primary school, for a child who is at grade one to know when to cross the road and where to cross the road. And of course, we've got to take that to all South Africans, whether it is in churches, it is in universities, wherever, so that we are all aware of these issues. You know, if you go to other countries, if you are in Canada, for instance, you don't cross the road anywhere. It doesn't matter whether they're the because it's in the morning, it, the roads are quiet right now. You wait for the robot to be, to, be, to be green. In South Africa, we are very happy to do what we call jaywalking, to cross wherever. And I think it's these things that we need to intensify and ensure that we enforce, if it calls for us, enforcing the law. We've got to enforce so that we, we adopt a particular culture, which is important, that of knowing where to cross the road, that of knowing when to cross the road. And I think these issues are, are, are quite important. So yes, we working together with the Department of Basic Education, working together with the Department of Higher Education and Training, working together with other departments because we believe as the Department of Transport that the issue of road safety is, can no longer be the issue of the Department of Transport. It has to be the issue of all South Africans. What we did for HIV and AIDS, we believe that it should now happen with the road safety and the fatalities. It cannot be that in just a year you lose people such as 12,000 people. It's too much. It's people that we've invested a lot in. It's young people. It's males. It's people that have been to universities, that have qualified, that are breadwinners in their families and they are dying. It cannot be that we're going to have 18 children, school children dying and we continue as if nothing has happened. These are future leaders of South Africa. And therefore, I think it's time that all of us together I like the fact that you are here from the media and I think you're taking our campaign to the highest levels and we appreciate that from the media. And we think this is going to assist us to send a message to everybody that this is what we need to do. 227 kilometer speed in a country, none in the world will have such a speed limit. So it, when it happens in South Africa, in Free State, during the Easter weekend, we're catching somebody driving at that speed. That is madness. And, 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 and should be condemned by all South Africans. We're condemning it as the Department of Transport, but I, all, I think all South Africans must condemn such. When a child buys a car, yourself, it must be good, but the family must be able to say, remember, this car can kill you. If you drive it negligently, if you're driving it um, at the speed that is not correct, you can actually die from the car because people are dying. So yes, we, we are here to say that, to say to South Africans, to say everybody, please hashtag slow down, hashtag save lives. That's what we're saying. So South Africa, slow down. Not only during this week, slow down at all times. We're going to save lives when we do that. Deputy Minister, I want to talk to you about the behavior of drivers. I think uh, that's been at you know, the center of these conversations when we talk about road safety. Is there a direct link between the law and what it's been able to do and the behavior of drivers? Are drivers changing the behavior or is that something that we're still struggling to see? If you look at where we were 
between 2005 2009 before we became signatories to the UN decade of action 2011 2020 the 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 the, the, the fatalities were at 0 0.56 per 100,000 population we are in reduction in the reduction now we are reducing fatalities by 1.88% per 100,000 population so it's an increase it's a good one uh, but are we where we're supposed to be? In 2013, we're able to do that at 22% per 100,000 population. So it actually means that we can actually move from zero from 1,88% where we are now, because we managed to move from 0,56%, we are now at 1.88%. 1, 1 and at some stage in one year, we're able to achieve 22 percent per hundred thousand pop of population we can therefore move there and we can move with speed are we supposed to move towards that of course yes because that is noble that is correct that is that is that is moral uh, moral and, and, and moral it's morally correct i want to say and we've got to do that and we can do it so yes if we're working together i'm saying the private sector the public sector people of south africa drivers you are correct Remembering the taxi industry, the bus companies, knowing that when they are transporting people, the taxi industry particularly because the travelers a survey is indicating to us that people who are traveling in South Africa, they use taxi. In fact, 70% of people traveling in South Africa, they use the taxi industry. It therefore puts a lot of burden on them not only to remember about the, car, the money that they're going to get from the people, but also to remember that they're actually transporting families. They therefore are accountable and responsible for ensuring that they are safe but the private cars as well so yes <laughs> <laughs> all right that is the Dep deputy minister of uh, transport uh, cindy siwe chikunga talking to us about their partnership in uh, the gassi road safety uh, campaign it is the biggest convoy and we'll leave from here at pumulani uh, mall and we'll go all the way to the uh, uh, fosleris stadium from 10 o'clock from myself sims it's back to you in studio where we'll catch up a bit later on